What's the best part of seeing in a space broadcast? Well, the launch, of course, but anyone can set up a camera with a telephoto lens and record the launch of a rocket. But what we all can do, though, is write it. Riding that fire, roaring into the sky, the vibrations and the g-forces only getting more intense as we accelerate through that thick atmosphere, punching a hole in the sky, all while our rocket is shedding every ounce of weight it can to go higher and faster until that magical moment, Miko. We have silence. The Earth's curvature fills our lens as we wait for a BAM! Second stage, oh my god, it is ignited! We're going to space. Our first stage falls away and we fly into that darkness with the specific destination in mind. This time, it's the moon. For the first time in over 50 years, a spacecraft designed to carry humans is going back. And it's being recorded in a way we've never seen before in the Artemis program. Hey everybody, TJ here from I Need More Space. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more space videos like this one. So yeah, there's cameras scattered all around the space launch system, Orion, and its service module. Not to mention the 150 plus cameras on, near, and around the launch pad, which we may be getting into in this video. But the focus of this video is on Orion and the goals of each camera from an engineering observation perspective, as well as the views we will get to see during the mission. This payload and vehicle are very unique, so I felt like it deserved its own video. So there are three different kinds of cameras that are mounted in and around Orion. The first being a 360 camera inside the capsule, which will give a very interesting 360 degree view of ascent and during the mission, which I'm very excited to see. The second set are modified GoPro Hero 4 Blacks. It's basically the brains and the sensor of the camera with its own optics and housing to protect those digital bits from the extreme environments of space. They connect to the camera controller system via Wi-Fi as they are not mission critical cameras. So they can still hit their mission objectives without these cameras, basically. The GoPros are mounted inside the cabin of Orion, as well as on the tips of the solar arrays. They are capable of capturing 12 megapixel stills or video at 4K 30 frames per second onto their SD card to later be transferred. But for live broadcast and monitoring, they'll be at best 720p resolution. And frankly, I would expect lower resolution due to the varying bandwidth restrictions throughout the flight. I'll dig into the reasons for that later in the video. But we may see 4K video from Orion during the mission, but just not in real time. The files will be downlinked afterwards. The other set of cameras are wired directly to the camera controller as they are mission critical cameras for this flight test. They are cameras derived from the PixieLink PLD750 camera. Oh, fun, I have one. I don't, I don't have one. Nobody has these, they're engineering cameras. These cameras are much more rugged and will perform better in the space environment due to the extreme temperatures and radiation tolerances than the GoPros. These cameras can also beam back a 720p signal much like those GoPros. Again, I would expect low resolution footage from these as well. From an engineering perspective for this test flight, NASA needs the high resolution video to analyze post-flight to inform them on the Artemis 2, 3, and beyond missions. So that's a top priority. All right, so while we're on Pixie Link, let's knock out their jobs first. Starting with possibly the most boring, but also the most important camera that is on the vehicle, and that is the one nestled between the service module and the command module. Here is my fake Orion. It's actually an Apollo capsule, but you get the point. Here's our command module. This camera is nestled on top of the service module, pointing out so that as there's separation, it's getting a complete view of Orion's heat shield so that post-flight engineers can analyze the heat shield to see if there was any damage to it so they can make changes to the design if needed. The additional objective is to confirm via stream that Orion did separate cleanly. The next set of PixieLink cameras are the fairing separation cameras mounted on the service module, each one facing its own unique direction to monitor the fairing separation around that service module. One camera is mounted outside the fairing facing down towards the ICPS stage, and the second camera is mounted inside the fairing facing outwards. Using these two cameras, NASA will be able to analyze and confirm fairing separation for Orion's service module. The final pixeling camera is the optical navigation camera, which is mounted on the crew module adapter nestled between the two star tracker cameras. Those cameras serve as a backup for Orion to determine its attitude in space in the event that the inertial navigation system didn't work. 
We're never gonna see imagery out of those. It's all like in the computer. And as a side note, the crew module adapter is that thicker ring part of the service module where Orion attaches. So you have like service module adapter Orion on top. Now this optical navigation camera also serves as a backup in the event that Orion lost contact with the ground in an emergency. This camera will use the size and angle of either the earth or the moon to establish its location in space. This camera is mission critical as it will allow Ryan to perform precise maneuvers to get home safely if it lost contact with the Deep Space Network. A fun fact is that this camera system was tested by Drew Foisto on board the International Space Station inside the cupola module to help fine tune this technology. This mission will also certify it. You gotta love that NASA human rating dissimilar redundancy requirements. Now, onto the GoPros. There are three mounted inside of Orion, each with its own goal. The first is pointed through the forward hatch of Orion. Its job is to capture the launch escape system separating during ascent. I'm sure it's also going to capture some incredible views while orbiting the moon. The second camera will be nestled while the crew will be seated to show the interior of the cabin. Look out for the zero-g indicator, Snoopy by the way. This is very scientific. The final camera inside of Orion will be facing out one of the side windows directly above where the commander and the pilot seat, so you have a great first person perspective of what they'll see. And the final set of GoPro cameras are my personal favorite. They sit fixed at the tips of the four solar arrays attached to Orion's service module. Think of them as four selfie sticks that can twist and maneuver all around your space vehicle. It's incredible. So as these arrays twist and maneuver to capture sunlight, these cameras will be able to get unique views of Orion and the Earth-Moon transit like we've never seen before. And there will be periods on the mission where Orion is scheduled to operate on batteries, which is when the arrays will maneuver themselves into a variety of positions to scan the vehicle for engineering test purposes, as well as get incredible cinematic imagery for the public to enjoy. Now there is one other set of cameras that I did not mention earlier because we won't get this footage during the stream, but they are cameras placed in the forward bay of Orion nestled underneath the protective cover that protects Orion's parachutes. There's two cameras that will capture in high speed the separation event of the cover and the deployment of the chutes. This footage will be captured internally in the cameras and transferred later. Now, I did want to note a few things about what we'll see, when, and why. First of all, it is a mission objective to stream back 720p video at some point during the mission. How much we'll see is not clear. This is largely due to managing the bandwidth on Orion. During the initial ascent in TLI, Orion will be communicating using the near space network. So as Orion flies away from Earth and passes the 2 million kilometer point, it'll begin using the deep space network where there's actually more bandwidth available. Leading up to this, Orion will be recording video onto its either local SD cards or its two video controllers, one of them located in the service module and the other in the capsule. These controllers are the brains of the entire operation, capturing, saving, and distributing the footage. Each of these controllers have one terabyte of space. I'm sure that you can do the math that two terabytes of storage is not gonna be enough for continuous 4K recordings of 13 cameras over 42 days. So much like everything else in space flight, we run into a resource management problem. Fun. You have the bandwidth limitations in your downlink and the limitations of your onboard memory. So NASA will be selective for when they hit record, trying to save most of their storage space for key moments in the mission. And with its K-band antenna, Orion can downlink about seven gigabytes of data per day. Footage will be part of this daily downlink, but it'll be mixed in with other data from the flight. Also, the cameras can't stream back and record simultaneously. So yeah, it can do one or the other. It can't simultaneously stream and record. So. That's a, that's a bit of a bugaboo. The good news is though, however, is that in the future, Orion will be moving to an optical antenna system on Artemis 2 and beyond, which allows for 1080p streaming and 36 gigabytes of downlink per day, which is six times more bandwidth than through the K-band antenna. So these limitations we're gonna experience with the Artemis 1 are gonna be short-lived, thankfully. Upon receiving Orion after the mission, all the footage will be copied and hopefully later distributed for all of us to enjoy. I do encourage NASA to just, uh, copy and paste the footage uh, to their server so that we can download every frame and see the entire mission with every detail we can. I'm begging, <laughs> please do that. And those are the cameras on and around Orion. So bonus round, time for SLS. Now this video is already kind of too long, so I'm gonna try to not go too nitty gritty on these cameras, but SLS has eight cameras, six of them located exterior, two of them interior. Of the exterior, there are four cameras mounted to the engine compartment looking forward. These cameras should give an absolutely nutty perspective of ascent 
booster separation and fairing separation of Orion's service module. I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be looking up. We're going to be flying through the clouds into space. The sky is going to go from blue to black and we're going to be able to see that from that perspective. Nuts. I love it. I think that these cameras at the base of the SLS are going to bring us the most unique and standout views of Ascent. There are two aft facing cameras mounted to the exterior of the intertank. So if you're like looking at SLS, these cameras are on the side of the tower. So if you're looking at from the side, you can't see the cameras, but these cameras should give an excellent perspective of on ascent, the tower going by, going by, am I using the right words? Of the tower leaving SLS, there we go, and flying into the sky, kind of like, I don't know, I'm sure we've seen these in, in movies. Um, I'm doing a terrible job. It's late, give me a break. Anyways, like the cameras at the base of the booster, they're gonna monitor the ascents, booster separation, and fairing separation of Orion's service module as that does happen during the core stage burn. With these six distinct views, the engineers will be able to see a near complete view of the entire ascent of the booster, which is nice. They can marry their sensor data with the video footage to make sure they get like a really detailed perspective of the launch. The final two cameras though are located inside of the interstage opposite of each other and will record the staging event of the ICPS separating from the SLS core stage and ignition. Oh my God, there's so many cameras and we're not done yet. On the ICPS though, I wasn't able to find any cameras mounted to it. It's possible there's one or two, but I just couldn't find any data. So feel free to tweet me. I'm at TJ underscore Cooney. Uh, if you find any, I'd love to, to find out. Now there are cameras on the CubeSats that are mounted to the ICPS. There's a several CubeSats. I don't have the mental bandwidth to go into details in all of them, but they have cameras that each have some cool missions. One's gonna land on the moon. The other one is gonna like tail Orion during the earth moon transit. So that's gonna be a really cool view. So I recommend you look into that. So we've covered Orion, Orion service module, the SLS core stage, ICPS's CubeSats, and really the final area we haven't covered are the ground cameras, which NASA hasn't given us too much detailed information on, but we've been able to assess through a variety of hints of what we're gonna see. Yeah, what we do know is that there's over 150 cameras on, near, or around the pad, capturing the launch, generally speaking, in at least 1080p resolution. And I personally wouldn't be surprised if we saw eight to 12K resolution cameras being used because they're very readily available off the shelf. I've also heard that shuttle era high-speed film cameras will be used as well. These cameras will be in a wide variety of orientations and frame rates depending on their goals. Needless to say, they're gonna be epic. So you may get some that are horizontal view, you may get some that are vertical, just depending on what their goals are, and you may get some that are lower resolution but extremely high frame rates. So it'll be really fun to see what the mix and match footage will be. Now over tons of pixel peeping, I was able to come across a variety of the angles, so take a look for yourself to get a little tease of what we'll see on launch day. And that's it. That's the cameras. Those are all the cameras, I'm pretty sure. That's the vast majority of them at the very least. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new from this video. I hope that I earned your subscription. I'm just excited for Artemis. I hope you are too. I think that it's a mission that we need as a people right now uh, to look forward to something that is only a net good on our society and our world. Here's to a successful Artemis one and beyond. Good luck, NASA. Go Artemis. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. All right, bye.